welcome to the Built Different Podcast. Let's get it. All right, welcome everybody to the Built Different Podcast. This is going to be a special episode with my guy Steve here. This is Stephen Hines. He does a lot of things. We're going to talk about those lot of things. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get a haircut. I don't know if anyone's ever gotten a haircut while doing a podcast before, but you're about to be, you're about to be famous, bro. So let me get in this seat. That was, that was horrible. <laughs> don't I, do that <laughs> I might need a hip replacement after that. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> it's never as graceful as your mind thinks it's going to be. Yeah, that was, that was deep. We're cutting deep already. Bro, I'm telling yeah. you. Cutting deep. Yeah, what if one of us cry? <laughs> like, do, you got, do you got any preparation for that? <laughs> it's not going to be me. I'm just going to tell everybody now. Damn. You know I mean? Damn, yeah, nah. Like, life is pretty sad. <laughs> the rain is the only teardrops you're going to see. Oh, yeah. It's raining. Like, this is a beautiful setup. I wanted to thank... I don't know. Come on the camera, man. We, we got to thank you for the setup and the, <laughs> and the camera work and everything. Uh, to, tell us about yourself. <laughs> My name is Mahadi Walker. I'm on Wealthy Media. I'm just here, kind of behind the scenes. Hell yeah! Want to make sure you got a uh, shout out because we got a, we got a wicked spot here. It's really nice, you know. Dan, big shout outs. So Steve, man, you I know. Just want to take your specs. Take my specs. Hey yo. Hey, take your specs real quick. Oh yeah, my specs. I thought you meant like the specs in my head. I was like, oh, <laughs> I, was like, I was like, wait, no, that's wicked. I was gonna, this guy's a, like a scientist. Tape measure. I'm a surgeon, but not that kind of surgeon. Hey, yo. <laughs> You're a wild man, Steve. <laughs> oh, man. So, you, you got, how many brothers you got, man? I have one, two. You got two? Five. Five. Brothers. Five brothers. Yeah. yeah. We got Which a big them? family. Got so, like, family. Roland and Mike specifically. Yeah. How do you feel about those guys? Uh, on a scale of one to ten, type. Yeah, yeah, like scale of one to ten. Like, do you like your brothers? Probably like a negative thirty. Negative thirty. Yeah, negative thirty. So no, they're 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 good dudes. They're good, they're dudes. good dudes. I mean, but negative thirty was your first thought, man. So like, <laughs> like can can I be your brother? Like no. And do you? I I have a question for you, Steve. Do you? <laughs> do you even like white people? On weekends. <laughs> on the weekend. Nah, I'm playing. I, I, I love everybody. Love everybody? I, love everybody. I, don't, I don't know, man. You kind of... That was an abrupt no when I asked to be a brother, man. <laughs> nah, it's different, though. It's like, you know, the Heinz family is a, is a sacred entity. A and, sacred um, entity. We can't just let everybody into the, into the boys' club, you know what I'm So what, is, what does one got to do? Um, you have to be birthed in or, or maybe get into a marriage. So if you want to like, want to like marry like one of my, you know what I mean, siblings or cousins, I got I got a couple that are in mine. You know. Uh, Thomas Hines, can you guys imagine? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you have to change your name. Yeah, because uh, you know, being birthed, that would be a that'd be a wicked process. <laughs> oh man. So That's you're crazy. Me I didn't even ask you like what you wanted. I'm just giving you what I want. That's not usually what I do, though. Usually I do, like, a client consultation, and it consists of me asking so yeah, we, how uh, you want your hair. We consulted. I said, I'm just a white guy walking down the streets of the hood, and I just want a good haircut. And here we are. <laughs> we're, we're here. We're here, and I'm getting the, the Heinz special. Is that what you call it, Steve? I call it the, the Heinz Studio special. The Heinz Studio special. So... I don't know if you ever, you know, remember this, but the first time that we uh, ever, I think, spoke, like, one-on-one, because we've always had the, the group chat and, and stuff like that, but, bro, are you in the Illuminati? <laughs> no. <laughs> the crazy thing is, you ask, you ask me we, behind the scenes, and I'm sitting and I'm thinking, like, when would he ever think I was in the Illuminati? Nah, because there was one time where we were both really on our business shit, right? And I had hit you up. I was like, yo, bro, like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing for business? You're like, nah, man, I can't really tell you. It's complicated. You know, it's a long process, but I make a lot of money, man. So I thought you were in the Illuminati. <laughs> I don't think I ever said I make a lot of money. Usually but, I tell people I'm poor, but... Nah, bro, you were like... I definitely I'm, do remember. Um, I don't like to go too, too much in depth on everything that I do, just because... Uh, 
there's a lot of different things that people can't know your next move. You'll man. get you'll you'll spoil it when you talk about certain things before the things actually the, the meal is prepared. You know what I'm saying? Dude, I love that. That was pretty deep. So you were you were in the Illuminati. Yes. Then you were the beard guy. Yes. Now you're the haircut guy. Now I'm But the overall Illuminati you're the business beard. guy. I'm the Illuminati beard guy. So how'd you get into the Illuminati now that you're admitting it? Um <laughs> you gotta open up the, the fifth chamber. Where is this chamber located? I'm just saying, man, like I got I got a daughter that's turning three. I got I got a lot of a lot of money that's that's needed for that. I I'm looking for a way out, man. <laughs> so you tell your guys that, that my guys are willing to talk and I'm trying to get in. <laughs> once now, once I get in, maybe maybe we can we can uh, figure something out. But so you're not in the Illuminati. <laughs> you just said you were in the Illuminati. You said you were the Illuminati beer guy specifically. That was for a dramatic effect. Dramatic effect. That's all it was. was dramatic all right, that's, effect. That's, that's that's definitely fair. So since you're the beer guy, what would you rate my beard? One to ten. Your beard? I mean, let me, let me look. Yeah, my beard. One to ten. Your beard on a scale of one to ten. Oh, combing it out. That's luscious. Yeah. I'm gonna give your beard a 7.5. Dude, a 7.5. Once it's lined up, it goes up to a 7.9. 7. Point, so you're automatically subtracting 2.1 from me in this scenario, no matter what. <laughs> no. So let's go back to. Do you like white people, Steve? I love them. All right, all right, all right cool. Yeah, I'm just, just making sure. But yeah, so a 7.5. That's not bad, because I've been working on my beard. It, it took me till the age of like 21. To have a beard. It took me until 28 to have a beard. My beard was like wow. super patchy for forever. So what was your speech when you were like telling people you were the beard guy? I didn't really like, have a speech. Um, I just tell people like it is what I did. Do you, fi you fixed a it, lot of people's beards. Yeah, when it comes down to it, a lot of people don't really take care of their beard the way that they would take care of their hair on their face. Pardon the hair on their head, but you got to treat the hair on your face the same way that you would treat the hair on your head Hell in yeah. order for it to kind of look at its best. Um, but sure. I do have a product that helps fill in like the patches of your beard. Like I, that's, that's what happened with myself. Dude, let me tell you guys, like this product right here that he has too has saved some lives. Like let I got, me tell I got you. got a bunch of before and after. Some, so. some chopped cheese turning into beef patty <laughs> with beef patty with all the works. <laughs> But yeah, it's all really it's about maintenance, and then sometimes the best thing you can do is just leave it alone and let it let it be. You know what I mean? As you're taking care of it, you don't keep cutting it off. There's little myths of, oh, if you shave it with a razor against the grain, it makes it grow in thicker. No, it's not true. Those are lies. So a lot of you out there, I know, like a lot of you guys out there have really chopped up, you know, beards. I'm glad I'm not one of those guys anymore. You heard it here first, 7.5, that's that's crazy. After I'm, this haircut, it's gonna be a 7.9. 7.9 after this haircut, I'm honestly gracious. I do have a lot of people to thank, but we'll, we'll save that for later. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of you guys need to get this. How much is the product? It's $25. $25. See, that that's cheap for you guys to like, you but know, get some late. Dude, I saw this post. Dude, there was this post on the internet, and I think you guys are gonna know, know what I'm talking about. There was a post some dude was like, do women even like men anymore? Like, like you know, like that post right there. I think he should probably use your products. What would you say to that? Like, are, like, are your products? Do women like men yes. Anymore? Do do your do women like your products? Um, they like the men that use my products. If that counts for something. That's fair. Cause why would they use your products? Do you have products for women? Do I have products for women? Yeah. Actually, no, but if I, not for myself specifically, but in my shop, this is something that I've been doing a lot of is using my, my platform and giving other people a platform to sell their products in. And my mom actually has products for women. She does, um, the Heinz Dynasty. She does, she does soaps, body washes, body butters, a lot of like all natural products. And they work, they work really, really well. I might have to tune into that body butter. Yeah, because, you know... Very underrated. Low-key, when the winter starts getting crazy and the chapped skin skin starts to set in, that body butter is, like, a good look for Dude, it. Dude, hell yeah. yeah. But she has she has products for, for the winter. Pause, Steve. But do you like massages? Do I like massages? <laughs> yeah. I love them. Yeah, dude, I think more men need to admit that they like massages. because That's why I said about the body butter. Like, massages are completely, completely, like, underrated. 
I think as a barber, I I, mean, I think everybody needs a, needs a massage. But as a barber, like, if I could, like, invest in, like, getting a massage once a month at least, my feet, my back, shoulders, hands, hands specifically, it'd be lit. Like, dude, hips? Because, like, as we get old, dude, I, I just noticed my hips are just declining, dude. I think, like, you know, when I turn 30? When do I turn 30? Like yeah. six years or something like that? Six years? Oh, uh, you're in like a good Wait, shape, Wait, you just turned 30, right? I'm actually going to be turning 33. Holy fuck. Yeah, so... No, my bad. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't mean like, that as a roast, but... I'm creeping into the grief. <laughs> All right, man. I nah, mean, not really. Like, I, I like to think that I'm very, very young. And just protect your hips. The state of mind. Um, you know, because as I've gotten older, it's just been, you know, some mornings you get up, you got to like... Do a little bit more to get out of bed, you know? Yeah, and if you want to have maximum thrust action, you know, you got to protect your hips. Hell yeah. It's important for endurance on things like <laughs> walking up the stairs. Like, you ever walk up, like, a really long flight of stairs? Yes. yes. Every day. Yeah, every day. Every day. What do you What do you do to walk up a flight of stairs that My big every day? My shop is an is a, is a upstairs situation. Oh. Walk up the stairs you made it sound like it was on, like, the fifth floor of... It's some, really some one spot. flight of stairs, but it feels like a lot. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. So how did you even become a barber? Like, what, what inspired you to do that? So I was... Like, did someone, of, like, cut your hair, like, real bad one day? I want to know how barbers become barbers. All right, so in my situation, I actually was getting, like, a, a boatload of kitchen cuts. Yeah, you see that? He's taking care of me with the towel. It was terrible. Him. My dad, I love him, but, but he wasn't giving me the best cut. So you get to a point in life where it's like, if anybody's going to seek me, it's going to be me. You know what I'm saying? Meanwhile, I was like seven years old getting like bald. This might be bad, dude, but like I had that same thought because like it got to a point where like I kind of had my parents keep cutting my hair anymore. I mean, as you guys know, like I come from a real Caucasian family. So there's just certain things that like Caucasians just don't, you know, specialize in. And haircuts with me and one of them. (laughs) So I didn't start cutting my own hair. And this might be really bad. We might have to end up cutting this from the film. But, like, I went to Fantastic Sam's and tried to find the first Spanish barber that I could find. The first Spanish barber? Yeah, because, like, no offense, you know, Spanish barbers are really good at cutting hair. So that's, that was me, you know. If anyone's going to seek my hair, it's going to be a good Spanish barber. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's just, really is what it is. And sometimes you sit and you realize, like, all right, cool, if anybody's going to mess it up, it's going to be me. But I worked in the barber shop my whole life. I was... 10 years old, I got my first job sweeping the hair, so I was around it. Um, and it just looked like a place where you get paid to hang out with your friends all day. So at that time, I knew like I wanted to cut hair. I just didn't know I was gonna make it like an actual career going forward, but you know. So what would you say to the people that say hanging out at their jobs is what's making America lazy? <laughs> I think that hanging out, the, <laughs> Let me rephrase it. <laughs> Depending on what your job is, hanging out at your job is not a bad thing. So, I mean, yeah. These jobs if you're like, if you're yeah. like a cop and you're, <laughs> and you're just hanging out, hanging out and eating like donuts, crazy stuff going on, <laughs> and you're not, you don't care because you're just hanging. That's that's cool. And yeah. You're like you're like hanging out, but there's a fire going on, and you're like a firefighter. That's that's cool. Dude, I got pulled over the other day by two cops, right? And I was going like 44 and a 30. Like that's not that's not bad at all. Like that doesn't make me dangerous. That doesn't that wouldn't like clarify me. Someone that you have to. Criminal, I'm a criminal. A little bit. Yeah. No, I am because I, I I have had some tickets. 44 and a 30. Yeah. That's 13 over, buddy. <laughs> that, that's 14 over, but. Sheesh. <laughs> You're a mathematician too. I'm kind of yeah. I'm kind of pushing it, man kind of pushing it but yeah so like what what got you good at being a barber like right. it was it just like you cutting your hair or did someone like sit down and say hey you can cut my hair repetition like because that's a lot of trust it was repetition but i started so young that it was um i got a lot of my bad haircuts out early were people tight when you gave them bad haircuts at first i don't think they knew <laughs> <laughs> to be honest I, I started cutting myself and cut my little brothers and they were getting Damn, bad bro. haircuts. <laughs> they were getting bad haircuts from my dad anyway. So to get a bad haircut from your older brother, it's like, oh well, you know, it's a little bit cooler. It's cooler. He's, but I, if I keep it real, I, I wasn't a bad um, barber when I first started. Like, 
Not that I was super nice, but... So you are born with it? I was an artist. I've, I've always drawn, things like that. Yeah. So it was like switching mediums from a painting on... So you've been a barber for a while, so that, yeah. that must mean that you were like putting stars on the sides of people's heads, right? Sometimes. Like, like people were walking in asking like, hey, put, put a star on my head. Sometimes, or they'll come in and they'll ask for like a double edge up and I'll, I'll give it to them. A double edge up is great. Time. It was like a whole double edge up era. Oh yeah, yeah, you know. That was ridiculous. It was like not a lot of barbers could pull it, over, pull it off either. There was a lot of people that couldn't pull it off, but they tried to anyway. God, that's gross, double edge up. Did you ever like give someone an edge up that had a mullet? That had a mullet? Yeah. What if I had a mullet, Steve? Would you have done this haircut? Yeah. Yeah? I do everything. Do everything? Yeah, I do everything. Even the reverse fade? Even the reverse fade. Even the reverse fade. I'll give you a Saturn if that's what you want. So what's a Saturn? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds crazy. <laughs> I don't know, but whatever whatever you ask for, the, I really believe like, you know, if you, if you want an ugly haircut and you're willing to pay me for it, I'll give you the ugly haircut. You just gotta promise that you're not gonna tell anybody that I did it afterwards. So you heard it here first, guys, like Steve gets down and nasty. He gets in the trenches, he gives people bad haircuts if they ask for it. Only if they ask. So what would you consider like a bad haircut besides the ones that we already mentioned? Like um, what's the one haircut you just hate doing? Like someone requests it and you're just like, hmm. why? Hmm. I don't know if I have one anymore. I, what, what I usually hate doing is something that everyone, there was an era when everybody wanted a mohawk. So everybody, <laughs> was a was getting, everybody was getting in my chair and asking for a mohawk. So I got annoying where it's like, yo, come on, ask for a taper or something. Have you ever smacked anyone? In the barber chair? No. Yeah. Oh. Do I, th that wouldn't be professional. Yeah. Damn, but like, I, I don't know, I feel like if I was a barber and someone sat down, looked me straight in the eye and was like, I want a mohawk, I... You'd smack him. <laughs> I, I feel like, like your first and last client. You know how you play a story game and like you get those like three options to choose from every now and then? Yeah. And one of them would be like smack person in chair. I, you would choose smack person in I, chair? I feel like it's the only logical choice. Cause what, like, so you just give people mohawks. If they, yeah, if they want it, they'll, they'll, I'll, I'll give them to them. I should haven't I, had a mohawk in a long time. Should I get a mohawk, guys? Well, no. at this point, <laughs> The option of a mohawk is, is, isn't there. Damn. All right, so next time I think I should get a mohawk. Next time, I got next you. Time, definitely. So you're, like I said, you know, the Illuminati, which is wicked. I'm glad you finally admitted to that. I got it on camera, everybody. Steve's in the Illuminati. You're the beard guy. He rated my beard a 7.5, which is insane. I don't think I've been rated that high for, for many things in my life. So thank you, man. The haircut guy. But the business guy, tell, tell us what you got going on, man. Right now, um, I've been working just with my shop. That's my main thing going on right now. I'm in a, in a different transition period of building like a new foundation. I'm uh, actually moving my shop in the next couple months or so. Um, so I've been scouting out new locations. And since I've been, I've been all on my own, not renting a booth and having my own space for four years now, and in that time, I've learned uh, I've learned a lot, um, which is why I'm glad that I had those times in the trenches of just learning and working out the kinks, what works, what doesn't work. Um, He's got me locked in right now, got me thinking. So there's some powerful words. I'm looking to move my location. I'm looking to. I have an idea for a location if you want the idea. I do want an idea. So like, what if, right? Do you remember Chubby's? Chubby's? Like, the store. Oh, I already Instant. don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so going to have like 16 guys outside selling Nick's a pit. The hell yeah, you know, Nick's a pit right now? Like, I don't, I mean, I feel like if you walked up to like a weed dealer and you were like, hey, can I get a Nick? They'd probably laugh. <laughs> I think I should try that. Now. I think like beefs <laughs> are the standard at this point. Yeah, but if I can No pay, one comes outside for anything less than an eighth. Five, five? I feel like that's still. Five five? Five five? <laughs> that's fire. Hell yeah. But you were gonna you were gonna direct me to Chubby's? Nah, I said like you should have like a corner store underneath 
and then your barbershop above. Oh, uh, okay. No, no. That's actually cool. Right? I was nervous. And then we could call it Chubby's. We can revive Chubby's. A lot of people get sentimental. <laughs> like, because I remember, dude, I used to live on Crane Street right there. Funny story, by the way. You were on Crane Street? Yeah. Like, for my whole, like, first half of my life. I was, until I was, like, I think, like, 16, 17, I, I lived on Crane Street. Mm -hmm. My parents had the same old broken down house for a while there. And then we moved to Chrysler Ave, which was, like, literally the street over. Uh, but, yeah, dude, I would be, like, age 7 to, like, 13, 14, just walking to the family dollar and just getting offered nicks, dimes, sour. Before wow. you even knew what it was. Oh yeah, no, I would just walk. Well, they would offer it. It was nice of them to offer, though. Not gonna lie, you know, it made me feel a little important. It was scary, but like my little pasty ass. I was like three foot nothing, just walking through the hood like nobody's business, <laughs> asking if I wanted a nick or a dime. It was, it was good times. See, I'm like reminiscing. I might cry a little bit. Nah, that sounds Some like people. sounds like a good time to me. So funny, funny story. At work, I got a warning. Uh, because I said that... <laughs> so they asked me what my favorite vacation spot was. And I said Crane Street is connected to New York. You said that at work? Yeah. <laughs> Why did they ask you that? <laughs> they were trying to make some like corny slideshow like while you're walking through the spot. You can see who everyone's favorite vacation spot is. So mine wasn't on there. <laughs> And I, like, they could have asked, like, they, they could have been like, oh, man, like, you're joking, right? Like, you know, what's, come on, like, stop being the funny bullshit guy. You can, you know, answer seriously. And I would have. But no, they were just like, okay. And then I got a warning, like, two weeks later, I was like, okay, that's <laughs> Crane Street. But Crane Street's a nice place. I definitely recommend anyone out there, if, you know, you want a place to vacation, Crane Street, New York. Any hotels that you would specifically, you know, direct them to? There's this spot, you can get like, you can live on Crane Street, which is the wildest thing. Like, for all the, <laughs> like, you can live there. And this, there's this specific part of, part of Crane Street I'm talking about with the corner stores and everything. Mm -hmm. You can live there, man. I don't know if you'd consider it a, a hotel, but. Like, you talk it outside. Like, 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 outside? You, you can live wherever you want, realistically. We're in the day and age where. You just live on the corner, you can live. You can do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about today's age? I'll be honest, I'm not really a fan of, of the, the direction that the world is going in. But then I also sit and I think about it. I'm not, I'm not the all ruler of the world, so, you know. And if I was, I probably wouldn't like it. Because <laughs> it's probably a tough job being like, you know, someone that's in politics putting together these, these uh, laws and you're trying to make everybody happy, which is completely impossible because, you know, people like to be angry, I feel like. I'd be the worst because if, like, if I made something that people didn't agree with, like, my legit answer would be like, ah, well, you guys are going to have to deal, deal with, with it. it. Yeah, <laughs> like, you guys are just, like, that's rough. Like, I, I wouldn't explain because, like, everything that I do is going to it's gonna be great for whatever I'm running, you know? But no, I, I, as far as like the direction that the world is going, and I'm not necessarily like always happy about it, but I look at things where it's like, you know, you're only in control of yourself and what, what your, your world is like. So as long as you're taking care of business in your world and taking care of your family, all the other things, you got to kind of just let it be as oh, yeah. it is, you know? You know those Instagram videos where they have like the real life shit, like people are talking real life shit, and then there's the... The nice sentimental beat in the background, and it's the it's usually black and white. Yeah, yeah we're gonna make a couple of these for you, Steve. I, I think that I would be really good at those. <laughs> I have like real, real deep moments sometimes. Usually with it for myself, you know. Pause. 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 Deep moments, man. You said it, not me. <laughs> that's not pause. That's 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 one of those moments like a tearjerker. Tearjerker. Yeah, that's that's honestly kind of fair. So. What else you got going on, man? Um, right now, besides my, my shop, trying to get that in, in the best work in order, I'm also, long term, my mindset is looking to build with other business owners. I don't want to get too, too deep within it. That's one of these Illuminati moments where it's like, you start talking too much and you, you, you tell too much, but... Everyone in this room is going to be sworn to secrecy after this. But I have, a, I have like, a, a heart for a small business owner, somebody that wants to build something for themselves, and I feel like 
providing a platform for for people like myself, um, that's like a goal for me, you know. So oh, yeah. building with building with other big other business owners, you know, whether it be podcasts, whether it be you're another barber, or whether you're a photographer, whether you're a tattoo artist, whatever it is that you're doing, you may make soap, you know, any way, building a, building a platform that really helps other people become the best versions of themselves, that's like my main goal, that's the... That's deep, because how I really feel is honestly, like, with, with that, it's, it's powerful, because there's a lot of people that are too stubborn, and they just do shit themselves, yep. and they don't accept that help, and then they don't eventually get far. Yep. Or they do look for the other help, but they kind of, they're manipulative about it. Yeah. Like, the people they surround themselves with, it's like, it's, it's greedy. I feel like you know what I'm talking about. Mm. Uh, but, you know, overall, in, in general, yeah, I feel like more people that work together, more powerful stuff can happen, because... Like for me, like for example, with pod with podcasting, I got I got other Steve, like our audio guy. Like I don't know what an F P Z H or a, you know I don't know anything about audio whatsoever. But I'm not gonna sit here and be headstrong and be like ah I'm gonna YouTube what all that means. I'm gonna yeah. be I'm gonna be the sound guy. No, well, you know you gotta just follow your pride sometimes. But you can't do everything. That's something that I really learned. A lot of times people they talk about self made this, self made that, and you know, there's there's an essence of being self-made, but nobody does nothing completely by themselves. By themselves Everything yeah. is built with a team. So if you're not willing to say, oh, hey, I, I'm one person and I can't do the audio while I'm interviewing someone, while I'm doing, you can't do it all, and you're not willing to put, the, put your pride aside and ask for that help, you'll never get far. You know. Right, and then like those same people will like wonder where the help is when they actually ask for it. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. But you denied all the help, man. But what's not talking about how nothing, no, there's no support. You know. So what other stuff are like? Do you have interest in then besides you know the barber shop thing and the, the podcast helping like obviously me with the podcast and helping other business owners? What kind of what kind of crazy ideas do you have? Because I have a crazy idea. It's actually a wicked idea. Um, business-wise ideas? Yeah. Or are you talking just what oh, yeah, I like I, to do on the weekends? Because I'm saying, man, and this might be wild. It might get me canceled. But old women, right? They they deserve love, too. For sure. <laughs> For sure. Where are we going with this? So. Are you going to make a dating site? Something like that. I mean, it, it'd probably be borderline prostitution, this idea. But they deserve to go out well, and they're rich. So we could just get a bunch of brolic dudes, pause, to like, you know, run the business for us and we could call it the last ride. <laughs> How old are these women? They could be Are a, they gonna die on the date? They're gonna eventually die one day, like they don't know, but like or maybe they do know, but maybe they want like a you know, a nice young stud to give them one last good ride, one last ride. Beautiful. And they pay a lot of money for it. So you want to start an escort service? That's what That's you want to call it. Like. Whatever makes it legal. You, you want to start a bunny ranch? A <laughs> bunny ranch is crazy. That's what you want to do? That's what it, yeah. sounds, that's what it sounds like. If that's, if that's what you, if you want to brand it and call it that, hell yeah, we'll call it the bunny ranch. I ain't mad at it. Now nah, the bunny ranch is wicked. I don't know. If, I don't know if I can support this right now. Why not, man? I mean, do you know what price these women would be willing to pay? These older women. That's like one of those moments where, like, you you you're on Instagram and some old it's like, lady from California messages you and says, "Have you ever had a sugar mother?" That's <laughs> <laughs> what it sounds like we're we're going for right now. But I mean. I'm not mad at it, you know what I mean? To and each their own. I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a market I mean, for everybody. Because, like, you ever, do you know what Magic Mike is? <laughs> I heard of the movie, yes. Yeah, so. The stripper movie, yeah. My mom went there once, and, you know. Oh, it's did, a real place. Yeah. You learn something new every day. <laughs> yeah, no, I so, thought it was just the movie. My mom, you know, my mom's an older woman, as you guys could probably expect, you know, me being 24 and stuff. Yeah, she went there. And, no, I didn't get this idea from that. That would be wicked, but. Like, I'm just thinking, like, there's a lot of older ladies out there that just, you know, 
They're old, so they're not getting any, you know, they're not getting any good, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not getting any good shit going on. So no it's action like, going on. No action, no good action. I like, that's a nice professional word. Action. So. Sorry. My list is. When you're getting the, when you're getting the lip, you know. Pause. <laughs> when, you're, <laughs> when, you're, when you're, when you're, when you're getting the lip, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta yeah. lie. So, Dwayne Wade, what does he mean to you? His favorite player, my favorite NBA player. Um, Would you jump in front of a bus for Dwayne absolutely Wade? Absolutely not. Never. So how can you be your favorite player? You know, we're talking, we're talking basketball here. But when we're talking like jump in front of a, you know, immediately, you know. Do you think you survived getting hit by a bus? Probably not. And if I and if I did, I probably would be very, very happy. You'd be my a vegetable. Be, my wife, my wife would be over. What kind of vegetable would you be if you could be a vegetable? If I could be a vegetable, I could be. Why not? <laughs> not if I had to be a vegetable. I'm not even gonna say if I could be because I don't even want to. <laughs> but if I had to be a vegetable, <laughs> you know, I'd be a cucumber. Pause. Why? Wait! Wow, wow, that's wicked. Sounds like sounds like it'd be a great a great place for the last ride. You know? Wow. Steve would be a cucumber. I never nice, thought of it like nice that. Cucumber. Cause it's like you know me. I was thinking like I'd be like a carrot. Cause like that's just some shit people eat. Like I wanted if I'm a vegetable, if I have to be a vegetable, like you said, you know. Well, it's great to be in a cucumber. That's I'd want to be wanted, you know? you know. But like a cucumber, wow, that's different. Yeah, <laughs> So yeah, what does what does Dwayne Wade mean to you? What does he mean to me? I don't. I'll be honest. I don't think that he really means much to me. <laughs> so would you say he's a fraud? Because that's what I would say. Why would you say he's a fraud? I just, you know, I don't think he's one of the greatest players of all time. I think he's great, Hall of Famer for sure. Of all time. I just don't think he's in that conversation. Um, greatest players of all time. I don't think that I would put him there. Um, wow. Well, Dude. I mean, depends on how long the list is. So you're a Heat fan, right? Yeah. Depends on how long the list is, though. I'm not putting them in, like, the top 50 players of all time. That's just me. Wow. But as we're talking about NBA top 75, he's there. Then if we're talking about greatest two guards of all time, now that's a totally different list. But you know, Do you think Allen Iverson is better? Is better than D-Wade? Yeah. No. No, why not? Bro, look at this. Check the stat sheet. So... Numbers don't lie. Well, what and, I, and I'm a big fan of AI. So you said he's not top 50, right? But he Ooh. would be D-Wade. Would no, you put he's him... not in my top 50. Where would you put him, third or fourth? Ahead of James Harden or behind? Way ahead of James Harden. James so that Harden would make him the third best shooting guard of all time, right? Yeah. So how can he not be top 50? Because my top 50 doesn't have, it's not a conditional 50. So you got, you got two shooting guards in that I got a top lot of, 50. I got a lot of bigs that I, that I Steve think Steve likes big men. I got a lot of bigs that, that I think are better. You know, I think big men don't get, don't get the love that they should when it comes to the NBA. Because I agree, like they don't I agree. Get, they don't get the style points that everybody In a way, to. I feel like Dwight Howard's underrated. I do too. I think that they disrespected yeah. him when they didn't put him in that NBA 75. I got to get Dwight Howard on the podcast. He'd probably love to be on the podcast. I'd probably ask why he's a seven foot bottom. Not as crazy, imagine. Oh, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> you ever heard of the, heard about that? No. <laughs> Just look it up after we're done. That sounds that's like not a story. Like, that's not a story it for the podcast. Like I don't want to look up. Like what? Yeah, no. He was, sounds dangerous. He was being called a seven foot bottom. It was a very incredible Atlanta story. Atlanta's a wild place. No, it really is. I've never been though, so I can't really talk too too crazy about Atlanta. I haven't, I've never been there. Oh yeah, but man, I've, but I've heard it was a crazy place. Very treacherous. So, I have an important question. Mr. Coffee. You know who Hillary Clinton is, right? Yes. You know who Hillary Clinton is? Yeah. So. You know her. You know her. You know about the emails. All right. So you see, you see that door right there. Yeah. The exit sign, right? Yeah. Okay. So twenty chicken size Hillary Clintons come running through that door, or 
It can be two Hillary Clinton-sized chickens. Who you fighting? And why? I'm taking the 20. Okay. And I'm taking the 20. It kind of, all right, so. I feel like I'm going to have this argument with before everybody. Before I say the 20. Everyone's always going for I'm the. I'm thinking 20 and they don't have Hillary Clinton, regular Hillary Clinton size, like, strength. But. But it's 20 of one thing. 20, 20. That's a lot of, that's, that's a lot. a lot of, one kicking you out for, for, okay, for so, good. But, like, you think they're not smart? Like, do you think they out. can't, like, go into a huddle, like, 20 of them, and just, like, here's how we're going to get them. And, like, say 15 ran through. Like, you don't even know what's going to come through the door. No one even prepped you for this. But 15 come through the door. You think that's it, right? Because you don't know there's one. And then five come through that door. But you said 20 come through that door. Right, start. but, like, 15 come through that door. No, They're no, distracting you. can't you. change it. Five <laughs> come in and grab your butt. What are you going to do? If five midget Hillary Clintons just grabbed your butt while you're focused on the 15 others. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna feel real uncomfortable. And what if one of them has a clock? But no, now, you're, now the scenario is changing. So what do I have? What do I have? Do you I got have a weapon? You have anything in this room right now? So I'm washing them. I, I promise. I'm, I'll wash the two, the two chickens too. The two Hillary Clinton side. Yeah. Have you ever seen a big, thick chicken like that? No, I have not. No, those are some powerful creatures. Like, if there's anyone built different, it's those chickens. And I hope, I know I'm going to ask everyone that I interview this question, but my answer is going to be the same. You're choosing, so you're choosing, I want to hear why. I'm choosing the two, the two Hillary Clinton-sized chickens that walk through that fucking door. Why? I'm being there, it's a manhood test. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's just crazy, two big-ass chickens just appeared. You've never watched Family Guy, have you? No, I have. But you like, know how long Peter was fighting that one? These chicken, chicken? these chickens don't have fists, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest. I'm also choosing. Are you chicken. counting me I'm out? I'm choosing. I'm not counting you out. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm okay. scared of birds, so, so I'm 20? not choosing two oh, okay. big things that I'm afraid of. So, you know you're, I mean? so you're scared of birds, but you're not scared of midges. Why? Well, first of all, it's it's an honest question. I mean. First of all, it's little people. Okay. Second of all, I'm not. <laughs> no, I am not. Okay. I'm not I mean, afraid. They got brains. I just think that, you know, no matter how, how much of a brain you have, I'm kicking you across the room. But you have to do 20 of those kicks. Like, what if you tear your groin on the fifth kick? Not happening. Not likely. Well, you're going to have to kick fast. Like, imagine how fast you're going to have to kick, because there's going to be 20 of them. Have you ever seen my kicks? Are you going to show... Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like you gotta show us your kicks. <laughs> Those kicks are for my eyes only. For your eyes only? <laughs> what? He's just out here kicking shit on the low. You gotta practice those kicks just in case you don't never know when you're gonna have to kick something. I just, I, I can't, I'm sorry, I don't know if this is me downing you, but I can't see you beating the, the 20 Hillary Clintons. That's a lot of powerful women. No, nah, I don't. And for me, it's like I like powerful women. So it'd be like, if 20 Hillary Clintons walk through the door, I might pause for a second and be like, wow, is this hot or is this? Either way, it's amazing. And that, that's all it could take. Hillary Clinton's hot? I'm not going to let you get away with that one. I heard that. <laughs> is this hot? Yeah, I heard that. Hillary Clinton. How old is this woman? She's like 86, right? Can someone look that up? <laughs> <laughs> How old is Hillary Clinton? Do you think her and Bill still have sex? They hate each other. So they sleep in separate beds? I believe so. Okay, good. I, I believe so. <laughs> oh, no Wi-Fi? All right, so we're going to assume that Hillary Clinton is 74. Yeah, let's just, that, that's, a nice, that's a nice round number. She's, seen, she's, she's cool. seen a lot, dude. I mean, she has a lot to bring to the table, a lot of experiences. She's not afraid to get her hands dirty. Like, like when, you, when you have a woman, right, when you have a queen, what you want out of your queen is someone that's not afraid to get their hands dirty. Because a woman that's not afraid to get her hands dirty, she'll get her hands dirty for you. And a woman that'll get her hands dirty for you, I mean, why wouldn't you want that as your partner? So Hillary Clinton, yes. I will go on record again saying that I think 
Hillary Clinton is hot. That's all I wanted to know. She's scandalous too, like she's mysterious. It's like, you, I mean, I know you're married. I have a girl. Uh, Steve, you're married. So like, I know like back when we were younger, like that, the chase, the, the mysterious but chase. But Hillary's not the one that I'm chasing. That's but, all I'm saying. But she's mysterious. Know? What did you want to like know that mystery? Not that one. You don't want to know that mystery? No. Not not Hillary. <laughs> not Hillary. <laughs> no. So what now, we... now if now now alright. Hillary or Oprah? <laughs> Since we're you know what I mean? Since we're talking mysteries. Listen, I love me some color, so Oprah can get it any day of the week. <laughs> Oprah can get it any day of the week, bro. Oh, any day man. of the week. I mean, like, that's not even a, a choice. That's not even something I have to think about. Like, Dude, Oprah's if Oprah walked cool, up like... and was like, yo, like, take off your fucking pants, I'd be like, all right. Oprah's taking off my pants. Richard, so it's like, you it's know, just, it's I just feel this like what it if is. I end up in the will, I'll be living a whole lot better. Oh, man, that's right, because she's mad old, too. Yeah. I didn't think about that aspect. Yo, Hillary Clinton does not have that much money. You feel me? Like, wow. Yeah, no, fuck Hillary Clinton. Oprah. Yeah, because, like, with you? Oprah, do you think she cooks good food, too, or at least has, like, a wild-ass chef at all times? she got a mad good chef, for sure, but she does have, like, you know what I mean? She has that, I, that auntie that, that makes really good greens look. Or, like, a really good apple pie. <laughs> Like, like, if I got into a fight with my girl, I know I could go to Oprah's house and be, like, gifted like a with a like warm... Pie. No, do I, can apple pies be warm? Or is that just considered disgusting? Be. Okay. So get At a warm... Get, get a warm... <laughs> I only like Get warm. a warm apple pie from Oprah. I feel like that would be the way. So what do you think about COVID? Hmm. I COVID was a really, really funny, one funny thing. So, so to start with COVID, yeah. How did you survive, like, as a barber through that? Like, was that like, was it weird or? It's strange because it's like one of those moments where it's like you don't really know. Like when when I first heard about it, I was like, I, I this is some some real weird fake stuff. So I wasn't really worried about it. I met, usually I'm the type of person that I don't really get too worried about anything. That's just that's just me. But then. They started making it sound like if you go outside, you die. So I got a little nervous. I was like, Bro, you Whoa. would go to the like Hannaford or the Price Shopper, and people would be like, hazmat suited up. Yeah. So Pete, I had a moment in the shop where this is what you had a hazmat suit on. No. Oh. <laughs> but this is the moment where Steve I kind of was like, crazy. Maybe I should close the shop. I had someone come in, and he had you know like Dexter's mom with the dish soaps, like the dish soap gloves that go up to like the no, elbow. No, 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 you're lying. <laughs> I promise he came in with those and and I looked and I was like, this, is, <laughs> this just got everybody going nuts. Like this, if someone's going this crazy about it, maybe there's some, some truth to this. Maybe it's, maybe it's serious. Like, but I'll be honest, like I wasn't really too concerned with no, that's, it. That's I'm, no, I don't want to like lighten I don't want to want to lighten it too much because I know that there were people that passed away from it. There were people that people love. Yeah, no, I mean, for me, it. like, obviously, like, I feel like it's real. But, like, at the same time, I feel like, you know, I mean, a lot of people feel like this or I could be a conspiracy theorist. I mean, I feel like the government did use it to their advantage. For sure. But did you use it to your advantage? Are you asking me if I got a PPP loan or something? <laughs> <laughs> like, it sounds like you're asking me. Like, I don't, I don't have a wire on. Are you sure? Are you the FBI? I don't have a wire. They, on. You know they're like getting people for that stuff right now. Yeah, but I don't have a wire on. But no, I definitely did. Like during the whole COVID stuff, I, I, I used it to the point where it was like, all right, mentally, I'm in the house. This is the first time I'm getting a fucking And I mentally beard cut get like myself. This. I, I mentally got myself into a good a good state of mind. Um, I started reading more, you know, started working out more, and you know, one of those moments where it's like, all right, cool. If I'm if I'm locked in, I got to be locked in on something something that matters. So 
I started thinking of different things that I could do with, with business more. Um, I use it to my advantage. I know that most people did not. A lot of people, they just bought mad seafood boils, you know what I mean? And, and got mad, like, you know, I'm looking at you. Stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes. Did you get the seafood bros? Oh, yeah. I just told Lord to have to my money back. <laughs> like, I've never not, seen I mean, so like, much seafood in my life until, until COVID hit. Yeah, I do those, too. Holy shit. Those too. Shut up. Shut up. Damn, I'm about to get eyebrows, yo. You're about to save my life. Oh my god. Yo, this is wicked, guys. <laughs> yo, the Built Different podcast, I'll get like a fucking steam fucking... Wow. What's up? What if this is like brainwash or some shit? Like, this is how I get into the Illuminati. I, inf I infused it with uh, some oils that is going to turn you into a chicken. <laughs> so we're just gonna fight. <laughs> we're just gonna fight. <laughs> this podcast here is crazy. Oh my god! Whatever just happened, guys. I see life a little bit different. <laughs> I'm about to lay back down. Yeah, this is crazy. Oh, this is a professional barber, folks. Don't go to your whack ass barbers no more. We got to fill Stephen Hines' schedule. Yo, what's it like being a barber, like, in general? Like, what's your, what's your message to other barbers? In? This right here, honestly, most, most barbers are going to feel me. It's a love-hate thing when you're in it long enough. Um, I've been cutting professionally now for 10 years. Um, and there's moments where you just get the social overload. That's, I think that is one of the most one of the hardest parts of, of our job um, because you're everybody's best friend, not just friend, you're everybody's best friend at times. And, um, you know, too, yeah. if I see, sometimes I go out outside of the barbershop and, you know, I do weird things now sometimes where it's like, if I got to go to Walmart, I'm sliding to Walmart and Latham where nobody knows me. Just so that I don't see anybody because I just want to be able to get right in, right out. Because people um, probably be stopping me like, hey, yo. Yeah, they'll stop me and talk to me for hours. And it's not even their fault all the time. Sometimes it's mine because I like to talk and, I, and I'm personal. So I'll talk to people for longer than I should. And then my wife is wondering how, why I'm gone for so long. And I'm like, <laughs> I swear, <laughs> I only was talking to Johnny. You know, but um, sometimes it's the social Damn, overload. Johnny, whoever you are out there, you almost got my guy in trouble, man. I went through, I through, also went through like a moment where I was like really, really like, it's kind of, kind of a little state of depression because of the fact that, you know, you're dealing with a lot of different people where I'm like your best friend. And, and I get close to a lot of people that tell me a lot of different personal things for themselves. So you're storing a lot of other people's depression on you. You're taking it off them. And I like to do it because I know what it feels like. This is therapy for me for certain, certain people. So I'm giving you a therapy session. You're telling me all the, the, the nonsense that's going on in your life, and I'm willing to take all that onto myself, and I'll hold it yeah. for you through the cut. But nobody does that for me. You know what I mean? So it's tough. You know what I mean? It's tough at times, like, the just the social overload of other people's problems on top of your own. Um, then, you know, there's the, there's the issue of, all right, because I'm everybody's friend, at times you're, you're the guy that needs to do a favor for everybody. You have 30 people that call you and tell you, oh yeah, I don't have an appointment, but I need a haircut because it's an, it's, a, it's an emergency. And it's like, I'm one person trying to fill in 30 emergencies. But um, overall, the, that's an, overall, that's just not the, the, the main part of just Barbara. And it's, it's, a, it's the best part of my life, to be honest. Like I, I really do get paid to, to hang out with friends. Um, you guys could be going to anybody else because I'm not the only person that cuts hair and there's and I'm not even gonna say that I'm the best person that cuts hair, but you choose to, to come and help me support my family, feed my son, feed my wife. So, you know, because of that I sit and I and I'm and I'm thankful. And I wake up every day and I know I'm not gonna be pissed off. But there's so many people that have jobs that they wake up and they know they're going to be pissed off from <laughs> the minute that they walk in to the minute that they leave. <laughs> Steve. 
<laughs> see, this is where it is. Like you have your podcast that you're building where now you're able to be like, all right, cool. This is going to get to a point where it's going to just start, start being your family. Yeah. Hell you know yeah. I mean? No, that, that was, yeah, that was definitely deep. That definitely touched home. So being your dad now. Yeah. How's that been? It's been the best blessing that I could have asked for, to be honest. Like there's moments where I sit and I wonder why I didn't do it earlier. And then there's moments where I'm so glad that I didn't do it earlier, but it's been, it's been amazing, you know, to be able to, you know, help a young man become a young man. You know what I mean? He's been teaching me a lot about myself. He's been teaching yeah, me a right. lot you about got, life. You got to be able to have a son. Yeah, yeah. you know the vibes. Yeah, yeah I got the daughter. <laughs> it takes a certain type of man to raise a woman. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. it's just funny. It's just seeing myself in female form. It's, it's a little she bit. She does look just like you. Oh, dude, she acts like it's me crazy. too now. Like, she's like so hyper, just trying to make everybody laugh. Like, it's, it's honestly hilarious to witness. But, and you, you didn't have, well, I mean, you kind of did. You had your kid, like, kind of during COVID, like. Yeah, he was, he was a COVID baby. Well, she was pregnant, you know what I mean, towards the back end, and we had him right after, you know. He was born in 21. Dude, so much so. wicked stuff has come from that, like, you know, formula shortages and, mm -hmm. and shit like that. This is like the new baby boomer situation, like. Facts. We're gonna look and just realize, like, yo, we overpopulated the world all over again. And it's crazy because the population is decreasing, which is weird. Not until like, they start this next census and realize, oh shoot. Oh my god. <laughs> oh shoot. Yeah, because people are just having babies for no reason sometimes. Yeah. Like, you look to the left on your Facebook feed. You look to the right. Oh damn, you're pregnant. Crazy. Oh wow, you're pregnant. Oh, nuts. Oh, you're so amazing. I like it though. I think that I think that children is like some of the the most important blessings that you can have in your life. You know what I mean? So, do you think if we having them, if just we have them when you can take care of them, you if we I mean? trained our kids to fight the chickens, do you think they could beat the? Or, well, my like, son, yeah. my son, yeah. he's a different type of baby. Like, I don't know, I'll, he'll beat a chicken right now. Dude, my daughter is pretty aggressive. I mean, I feel like she'd really like ruin a chicken's life. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, like, I feel like she'd do a chicken dirty. I'd be scared of her strength sometimes because, like, I'd be seeing her, like, there's this, like, real heavy chair, like, that's, like, kind of her size, kind of <laughs> yeah. not. Bro, she'll lift that up and she'll she'll be, like, shaking when I'm like, bro, like, what are you doing? My You're son is crazy. My, 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 he goes to his, uh, his grandmother's house. She watches on the wall where I work. And she has a cat that he beats up on. Oh, my God. All yo. day. I feel bad, like, you got to leave Tara alone. Why are you doing nah, this like, to her? My daughter, she's like sneaky. So we were at a we were at a birthday party like last week and she let all the other kids hit the piñata. She didn't want to hit the the piñata. I kept asking her I was like, "Yo, you going to hit the piñata?" She was like, "No." No. <laughs> but then the last dude that was up there, he cracked the piñata. Bro, she ran up with a paper bag and collected mad candy. I think she had the most candy out of any kid. She probably didn't want to hit the pinata because she knew that if she did, she wouldn't be able to get to the candy. Bro, like that's that. what I'm saying. Like, just she's, smart uh, shit. She's a genius. So she went and, but she even, she didn't even go where the other kids were getting candy. She went into her own spots, mm -hmm. was just filling the bag, minding her business. And then she came back and sat down like, yo, we got to get out of here almost. <laughs> but I was like, no, we, we still got a little bit more of the party to go. But she was like, let's go. Let's she's go. Like, my work here is done. Yeah. But then she sat there and protected her bag of candy for the rest of the time. Didn't eat nothing. Didn't really talk to nobody. I was like, damn. She came for the candy, for the pinata candy. Walked in, took care of business, and left. Nah, she, sounds like, she sounds like she's ready for the chickens. My, my son and, and, and your daughter Just teamed up versus the chickens, chickens. And, and it's a W. Because, like, my it's daughter, she's, like, wickedly aggressive with, like, smaller babies, like, animals. Like, she, like my parents, Chihuahua, she'll, like, drag her across the floor by her tail. With no fear. You With no me? fear like, at all. Like just no <laughs> fear of getting bitten, no fear of you feel me? You gotta have that type of mentality. And I just feel like a chicken. I don't know. I mean if the chicken got her like like with with its beak and she started crying, yeah, I don't know. I mean, kids are kids are very up. sensitive. That's that's when you pull up and finish the job. Yo, tell me how like kids they be doing the most dangerous stunts. But they'll cry to the smallest thing. <laughs> like they'll do some wicked stunts, be okay. They'll laugh, they'll mm -hmm. fall on their face, like bang their head off the floor and just laugh at you. But like, you accidentally push them over, and it's 
I feel like kids only get hurt when someone sees. The moment that they know you saw is the moment that they have to like, all right. Ah, like, my son right. does that sometimes. Like he'll fall, and I try my best to just like turn my head real quick, like you know, I didn't see. And no, like, he sees me take peek out of the eye to see if he's okay, then he starts crying. Yeah, because like my daughter, she be doing that. She'll fall. And then she'll wait to see if anyone's looking at I'll look like, I'll look right at her with squinted eyes. <laughs> I'll just be like, what are you going to do? And then she'll either choose to cry or she'll choose to laugh. It's the most hilarious thing. But yeah, I man, I mean, like, ah, being a dad, like, that's some... It's a gift. That's some wicked stuff. It's definitely a gift. That's, and that's a lot of reason why, why I moved the way that I moved, because I have someone that never asked to be here, that needs me. And, and deserves to, to to not have to work as hard as I had to work to, to get anywhere in life. You know, I want to be able to give him a, you know, a head start, a head start that I felt like I would have loved to have, you know. Hell yeah, because it's a spooky world out there. Like, all of a sudden, you need to know the laws of fucking car insurance out of nowhere. That was a wicked thing in my life. <laughs> <laughs> like, I remember the first accident I got into, which wasn't my fault. I ended up having to pay like the whole entire thing because I didn't have the right insurance. Sheesh. Oh yeah, because it wasn't liability, it was, nah, that's it was collision. Cool. Yeah, so to all the kids out there, if there's anybody watching, especially the listeners out in Belgium, I don't know what's going on in Belgium. <laughs> Why Belgium? We have a following in Belgium, this podcast. Facts? Has that's like, fine. we have 13 active listeners. That's and, fine. And it, it grows, like it grows like a plus one every episode we do. Because the first episode we had three, and then now like 11 episodes later we have 13. That's fire. So shout out to Belgium. Shout out to Belgium, right? Hey. Just holler at me. I will get them. Like, I want to know who's watching from Belgium. Like, I think that would be interesting, but I don't want to know at the same time. Because whoever's out there spreading the word, I don't know what language you guys speak. Bulgarian? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I don't know. They most likely know <laughs> English, though. It's crazy. If, oh, yeah. If they're anywhere, watching and they're spreading the word, I don't think I have a translate option. Almost anywhere you Not go that in the world anymore. knows English and we know one language. That's, that's a problem. I wish I paid way more attention in, in Spanish class. Dude, in Spanish class, I passed with forged doctor's notes. For real? Yeah, because it got to a point where I just didn't... I hated college. Like, the whole concept of college everything it was just so whack to me um not that that makes me like a different human being or anything but yeah just in general just i hated college so the one semester i missed like at least like 15 whole days and that's a lot of days to miss in a semester so the spanish class that i was in it was easy i had this like this like person a couple of people that would like give me the notes and shit and i would i would still do the tests and stuff i would show up for the test but at the end, she was like, hey, you missed the class 15 times? I was like, yeah. She's like, wow, I don't think I can pass you. I was like, you're telling me this now? Like, we got we, good grades? Yeah, I passed, with, I passed with an 80. It was just your... In, your, your so uh, she said, just... like, if I don't have no doctor's notes for the absences, she can't pass me. Bro, I kid you not, I called my doctor and practically begged that man. I feel did, so did much better with this haircut. Huh? He gave, he gave me all 15 of them. He's a good guy. And you know where I brought those? <laughs> Onto the other classes, and I fucking passed with fucking flying colors that year. Missing 15 days of college. I wish bro. I had known that, because I, I, I was always at bad attention. College is depressing. Yeah. College is really depressing. I wasn't really... I liked a lot about college, but I also... Let me give the face up. I also <laughs> felt like, you know, there was so much about it that, that just <laughs> bothered me. Things yeah. that I felt like I would never, like I would you, never use. Like, imagine feeling stupid for some shit you're never going to actually need anyway. There's a lot of times like, that you go you go to a job. You, you Say you're studying, I don't know. I'm not going to say engineering because I don't know nothing about it. But, you know. I used to be an engineer. You're studying, like, social work or whatever. By the time you slide and you, you get to your actual job placement, they're going to tell you how to do your job anyway and train right. you for it. And, so, <laughs> right. You know? Have you ever had to use uh, C equals MC squared or Y equals MB plus or whatever that is? Have you had to use that? Y equals MX plus B? Yeah. I don't know why I remember that, but I but I but I don't know. If I <laughs> right, that was wicked, right? <laughs> it's Illuminati <laughs> shit. It's real Illuminati shit going on. I don't on know here, if I've ever used it ever again. I'm pretty sure I didn't. I may have used the theory and didn't know I was using it, but no. Nah. 
Damn, man. But uh, what's your, you got any final, any final words, any final takes, anything you'd like to say to our Belgium audience? We, oh, we got man. followers in Spain, too. Yeah, that has to be a thing. Shout out to those in Spain. Yeah, we got 13 listeners in Belgium. We got two listeners in Spain. A whole bunch of listeners in the country. There's someone in Canada watching us now. This is, uh, we're growing. Do they speak a different language in Canada? Do they speak What languages Canadian? do you know? I, I know, uh, I know can Canadian. French? I'm speaking Canadian right now. Yeah, that makes you, know, you bilingual. You know, I'm bilingual. You got a bilingual Illuminati haircut barber guy. I don't know, I don't know other languages, just, just, just English. But um, closing statements, I just want to thank you for giving me the opportunity. Hell yeah, to, man. Dude, know, I don't even, I haven't even looked in a mirror yet, but I can already tell. That's something that I should have brought. Maybe a hand mirror. Ooh. But, you know, I didn't think to pack one. Like, they got to call me Caucasian persuasion. This is just trust. You know what I mean? This is this is the this is building trust. Do you think like my nickname could be Caucasian Persuasion? Big pasty. I mean, if you want to call yourself Caucasian Persuasion, like would that be a name that flies? I don't know. I don't think so. Caucasian Persuasion. We're gonna. I don't know if, I don't know if it rolls off the tongue. And the tongue too well. My name is the Caucasian Persuasion. No, nah, that was another edition of the Built Different podcast. I gotta get up and give them jab. I know my my pants are, you know, are panting. Yeah, they're panting. <laughs> <laughs> but that was another edition of the Built Different podcast. Please follow, like, subscribe. We got a lot going on. This interview with Steve. We got baseball. We got basketball. We're gonna have football soon. Stay in touch. We're gonna have football soon. We're gonna have conversations where I just get really high with someone. Um, I'm going to Rolling Loud this weekend. Expect a podcast that's going to come from that. Um, just a lot of good stuff. And honestly, I had Stephen Hines on the podcast. Fucking Illuminati. Probably going to die after this episode. But hey, my family will oh, get no. paid. My family will get paid. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't come looking for me if, if, if anything. You know what I mean? So, have a good night, everybody. Let's get it.